capital. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing, uh, I've brought in uh, an Amstrad NC100. And the reason I bought this in, like I'm normally the Apple guy, but my actual first personal computer that I owned as a kid, uh, my parents picked up at some kind of charity auction in 1992 an Amstrad NC100, and I got given it as a gift either Christmas 1992 or Christmas 1993. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas 1992. Mm -hmm. And this was my first little kind of thing that was all mine. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just a simple, It's a, it, as I actually learned today, it's one of those things. I was nine when, when I got this <laughs> and I didn't care. It was awesome. I could type my documents on it. I could just plug in parallel printer, write out my docs, print it out for school. It was fab. It saved everything, had an address book, etc. And it's a, actually a Z80 based mm -hmm. unit, 64K of RAM. And it has Amstrad's BBC micro basic interpreter in it. So you could basically do a key command, drop into basic, and you could write basic stuff. It came with this small manual, and in the manual was two different basic programs. Uh, one was some kind of a calculator type thing and the other one was an analog digital clock that it would draw on the screen and show you the time. Now there was one problem. Now I'm sure that it was possible, I just never worked it out. I could never save my programs onto it that I wrote in the uh, uh, basic compiler because I believe you actually needed the expansion PCMCA SJDA card because I don't think it could actually store from BBC's uh, basic into the actual onboard RAM, which is where it actually stored your Word, Calc, and uh, Diary. The thing just runs on four AA's CR2032 backup, and uh, it, look, it was just a very, very basic machine, but as a nine year old, in 1992 it put me ahead of everyone else that I went to school with we had a basic PC that had died at home so I didn't have that anymore we bought an Amiga slightly later we had a 600 bashing around that would do stuff but this was just great for your kind of average bits and pieces now what happened was and this is this tells you about the time in computing I programmed this clock in basic and it would error out. Mm. So I'd go through each line. It was quite a lot of lines. I think it was about, I don't know, maybe 180 lines of code. Mm. And I'd go through and check them all and I might have a typo here and there. I'd fix it and i run it. And I got to the end after many, many months that I could actually program it and it would always start drawing the, the, the clock's face and die. So what did you do in 1992, 93, 94? Well, you wrote to the manufacturer. So in 1995, I got a letter back from Amstrad UK on the 11th of April, Alan 1995, Alan Trigger himself, I can see the signature. No. From uh, <laughs> no, Mrs. S.M. Lawrenson, the customer care executive. Right. Dear Mr. Frenulovich, thank you for your recent letter concerning the NC100. After consultation with our technical liaison department, their advice is as follows. The following sheet should assist you further regarding the problem you detailed in your letter, assuring you our best in attention, yours sincerely. Where is that sheet? I, I actually have a copy of it somewhere. Um, and I have the original letter at home. But basically, the program that they printed in the manual <laughs> had a problem uh, no, with testing. that particular version of BASIC. <laughs> so they sent me the actual copy, the which I then... <laughs> and it had like five extra lines of code in it. <laughs> yeah. And I went through and I finally got it to actually work after three years of trying. <laughs> and it's one of those things. That's good. So. Yeah. And like, just so, again. Yes. so when you, people talk about, you know, you write code and it just fails or you lose it or whatever happens. No, and you're like, ah, because that was the thing. If your uh, batteries went flat and then your 2032 went flat, well, your data was gone. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it was painful to kind of have those limitations, oh, yeah. but you know it, it's just so great. Like even in 1995, you sent Amstrad a letter to the UK. You sent a letter to the UK. There is no website. There is no email. 
There's not even a telex. Mm, yeah. There is literally a telephone and a fax. And obviously to send a letter off back then internationally wasn't exactly a cheap operation, but it was the cheapest operation yeah, because yeah. making a telephone call or sending a fax oh, to a fourth would have cost 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so sending a letter was the way to go. And I've kept that letter and this is just a copy of it. And uh, I just find it so hilarious that even as late as 1995, you have to send a letter. It's good they, they <laughs> helped you. It's good they, they put the yeah, yeah. And, they, and they did. And it was very, very kind of them to do so. It would have been kinder for them to print the right manual. <laughs> yeah. But once again, there was no way of actually sending out updates. And this is a little off tangent, but the problem with tech nowadays that I find very unloving about tech is you put out a product and if there's bugs found, oh, we'll just le release a software update. But in the 90s, 80s, 70s, you released a product that had bugs in it, you had to ship out floppies or CD-ROMs. There was no mechanism to give updates. If, you, if, you, if there was a hardware problem, well, you didn't just release a new firmware. You literally had to have people come in and do recall programs and quality programs. So it just meant that when they released a product like this, might have taken five or six years of development, like the Apple III, it took four years or something, but you get an actual polished product. And uh, and it was just the best thing since sliced cheese for me, because it is... <laughs> it's actually a Z80-based machine. Yeah. 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 It's actually what the uh, I'm kind of aiming the tech to be at one day. <laughs> yeah, and so the funny thing is, I, I, I wish I had actually bought it, another company in the US uh, actually sold these under a different brand in Canada and they're white and they've got it's exactly the same shape except the screen is slightly raised and at an angle and it's got a built-in battery pack and two pads that were designed for schools in the US and Canada to put into chargers and give out to kids as little word processor terminals. And what brand was that? Uh, I have to look it up but basically exactly the same keyboard same oh, coloured yeah, keyset yeah, yeah. it's just in the cream case same screen, mm, right. but weirdly, I thought, hang on a second, the entire board is the same. And I thought, what happens if I pull the ROM out of my Amstrad and put it in yeah. vice versa? Oh, so you got one of those as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it works. Doesn't, doesn't work. Oh, there's some changes. <laughs> so there's some kind of hardware modification too. I'll work it out did, eventually. Did they get permission from Amstrad to copy it? They, I'm guessing that Amstrad, by that time, because yeah. Amstrad probably yeah, had been out of business, okay. so they probably sold and licensed yeah. the board and the, and the ROMs out to third parties yeah. to make some money as they went. But, um, you, you, yeah. Did you ever get the um, the battery back door? It's, I think it's in the RAM of some sort. There's a card that goes into that slot in there. No, so, okay, so They're this as also rare as hen's teeth. They are as rare as hen's teeth. You can still get them on eBay time and time again. But I remember looking up, these were 64K, and I never came close to filling up 64K, which mm. is hilarious mm. these days. But I remember I was like, I always wanted to get a 64K or a 128K expansion. Mm. And they went up to 512. I think the 512 was like two and a half thousand pounds. Wow. It was like some ridiculous thing because it is basically... They're about a hundred dollars now. Is it yeah. PCM ICA? Yeah. 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 64K, I looked up recently and I think I can get a 64K for about 150 US. Yeah, they're, they're not cheap. They're not cheap because they were used in industrial computers. Yeah. yeah. But they allowed you to at least... And the funny thing is, I think... They actually have a 2032 in the memory card. Is that how they do it? I didn't yeah. know how they did it, but yeah. it was... There's actually a 2032 battery backup in right. the PCM CIA card to keep the data on the RAM yeah. when it's not plugged into a yeah. post. The Neo Geo, the arcade system, had a, and the home console had a save car, the solid storage thing. The first time a console had like a thing for moving save storage, but yeah. that's actually a PCMI. Thing. Oh, well. So that could be a good way of because getting on the work. Uh, I'll bring one in. Yeah. Well, the yeah. first kind of one that I think you know end users ever had was the PlayStation when their memory cards. Yes. Cars. No, True. but the Neo Geo was the yeah, first that had it before that. Okay. But, but, yes, but I'm saying yes, for mass, normal people. Yeah, yeah. normal people. Yeah. <laughs> Not just Japanese sub -markets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, look, that's that's the end of show and tell, unless anyone else There's wanted one, to, to one show quick, anything. Yeah, one quick note about tell. the tech one. What we would like to do, um, if the uh, ACMS will host us, and yeah. um, the, yeah, the, yeah. Um, is that we would like to actually do a proper launch of the 1G, and um, uh, what's his name, John... Um, 
John Hardy has shown interest at actually coming up here, so you could meet the man himself. Um, is he so, from Melbourne, is he? Yeah, he's from Melbourne, yep. Yeah. Uh, so John Hardy and possibly others um, coming up here to, uh, you can pick his brain, so kind of like the, similar to what the Mike V day was like. Um, so um, please yeah, yeah. pester him and let him know that you'd want to do that, um, make that happen here, yeah. I'd love to. Because we've, like, we've spoken and with Greg, we'd like to do a tech one day, I think there's interest in it. So actually doing, like the Micro B, the Lisa event, doing an actual event just focused on the tech one, what it does, interaction, you know, maybe even build a couple boards here on site and have a bit of a play. That'd be fantastic. So does everyone sound like that's something that might interest them? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, Any, anyone else? John Webster has joined us. Would you, if you, you want to say anything, John? How are you feeling today? I'm fine. Oh, Very I'm good. fine enough. Yes. yes. <laughs> Still feel <laughs> old. Happens to the best house. There's only one thing I listened to you all that I occurred to you that uh, you were all spoiled. 16K. <laughs> <laughs> My first machine had 1,608 bytes. It's wow. <laughs> nine year old kids get their own first before I I know, right? It's like, yes. <laughs> and then after, oh, after 10 years, we moved up to a mainframe that had a bit over a mega mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, So uh, Luxury. And of course, it, uh, yeah. the one thing it had was the disks weren't very big. Some of the disks were around here, they only had, had seven megabytes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had, only had five of those. That was why, of course, the people left the century number mm -hmm. off the base. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Which led to an event in 1999. Y2K. Oh, Something you might call Y2K. Don't worry, 2038 is coming, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I brought something along that oh, the well, manufacturers... 32 bit and lower processors can't well, software people dates by 20 kindly <laughs> gave us all a millennium bug survival kit. <laughs> if you have a look at it, it's got two band-aids in here. <laughs> it's got two small tubes of sunscreen. <laughs> Any software a patches? A refresher towelette. <laughs> Think about uh, dry. <laughs> four little paracetamol <laughs> capsules. <laughs> and a couple of uh, B complex and vitamin C tablets. Effervescent. <laughs> and um, some breath freshener tablets. <laughs> but no software patches. That's what we really needed. Yeah, well, we didn't day. need any of those. So that was done by the St. John's Ambulance and Computer Associates. Well, St. John's Ambulance uh, <laughs> Health and also uh, oh, someone or other. CA is health. on the front there. There's AMCAL there. <laughs> and it was Computer Associates was the company who well, they provided exist, software yeah. to us for a fee, of course, mm -hmm. Not, you know, throughout the years. And uh, they sent these around to us all. and. We all had an enjoyable, <laughs> we all had a laugh anyway. <laughs> there was a lot of Y2K paraphernalia around also. It sounds and like different images exactly of... what I needed on New Year's Day though. Yeah. 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 And, and the millennium sun, sunscreen. sunscreen yeah. <laughs> the way that people draw the millennium bug is always different. It's always yes. a different interpretation <laughs> of the bug. We didn't have any trouble with the... Uh, yeah. with the we spent when Y2K billions. came, yeah. we... It was a lot yeah, of we... Hey, if it wasn't for Y2K, I wouldn't have made my money, which I wouldn't have invested in Apple, which wouldn't afford me to be here today. But all the other oh. people who don't know about computer technology, they think I was all just a fuss, you know, it didn't really happen. No. And because they don't know how much work went on to prevent it. Yeah. A hell of a lot of work went in to prevent the Y2K. If, not, if we did, we sit there and watched, it would have crashed, things would have yeah. crashed. Aaron Parasitum. There you go. And, and yeah, talking about, I was saying about the distribution methods of, you know, having to write letters. Oh. Same thing, like John said, minimum RAM and ROMs. We used to write really high quality code because we had limitations. And the problem now is we have no limitations. So we write really messy code, really poor code because it doesn't matter. We've got gigahertz processors. We don't, we don't need to fit them into hertz and megahertz of processors. And, and then what they do is, that, and they actually, the, the lazy developers say it's, it's an operating system problem yeah. or it's a hardware problem because it's cheaper to fix it that way than it is to actually code properly. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you.
Mm. I, I remember having to go to the library on Saturday morning oh God. to find stuff. Yeah. If there was something that, you know... And Carter hadn't search. been invented yet. And Wikipedia was... That's why like yeah. talking electronics magazine, all those magazines yeah. at the time were like our Bibles. It was, you know, you actually learned stuff out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When the internet came around. Absolutely. Well, look, I'll get